Hey everybody, my name is Ted Forbes from The Art of Photography and welcome back to our Friday Q&A session. And every Friday I answer questions that you guys have about photography, about the business of photography, about fine art, about stuff we've covered on the show, it can be anything. And if you have a question that you'd like to have answered on here, the way to leave it is do it in the comments below. Um, that's how I select the stuff I'm gonna answer every week as I go through the comments. And the other nice thing about that is everybody else sees your comment and sometimes people have answers and it starts discussions. And it's a really good way to get your question answered. So if you have a question, leave it below and that's how I select these for the show. And this week our question relates to last week's episode. Uh, and last week we talked about uh, the differences between fine art photography and commercial photography. And today I want to talk about uh, the question we got from that, which is how do you get started in stock photography? If you're not familiar with stock photography, basically it's a, it's a very viable option. It's a good income stream if you're making your living as a photographer. Um, essentially what it is is, you know, if you think of commercial photography and a lot of times you might be commissioned to do an assignment so somebody wants a portrait or they want a product line shot they tell you what that is and you go do it uh, stock photography is a little bit the opposite of that in that you will shoot the photos and people will come to you because they need a photo for something usually quickly um, usually under a budget and you're selling the rights to use those photos so you might shoot things in stock photography they're generally gonna be a little more generic uh, in nature maybe you have food shots maybe you have shots of people doing things um, that people could use in a brochure or or an advertisement or something like that. So what's nice about it is it allows you to resell the rights to your images. So you might have an image that's very popular and you have 10 different clients who purchase that image from you. Um, it was shot before anybody ever bought it and then you're reselling those rights to use those. So that's what stock photography is. There are a bunch of major companies um, that operate in the world of stock photography and that should tell you that there's a lot of money in it. Um, I think for a lot of people, you know, your price points are obviously lower, but you don't don't have to shoot the photo every time you know you're reselling rights to the same photo so if you look at some of the bigger companies, there's companies like Getty, um, there's iStock Photo, which I believe is owned by Getty now, uh, but there's a lot of stock houses and this is what they do. This can be really good for you if you're trying to make your living as a photographer because it adds an income stream and it also, they act as an agent in the middle so you don't have to deal directly with clients. You don't have to deal directly with invoicing. Um, you don't have to deal directly with you know customer service stuff and that's a really nice benefit to have. They do take um, a commission out of the price, but it is well worth it for the amount of work that you don't have to do um, you know, surrounding that. Um, one of my favorite stock companies that I think is a really good um, company if you're interested in getting started in stock photography is a company called Shutterstock. And Shutterstock, uh, they have a global audience. Um, what I like about them is they were started basically in a garage and they've evolved into, a, a, well, basically a worldwide business. And Shutterstock actually have um, a web page that you can go to and you sign up for a free account. There's no strings attached or anything. And basically they have some materials that you can download, which are going to cover all the questions you're probably going to have going into this about like file size, uh, resolution, sharpness. Uh, what to look for with basically shadows and highlights and they don't want hot spots in the image but they're going to give you criteria um, that you can consider when you're producing images that will hopefully ma make them more sellable. Um, they also have an area where you can upload photos in there and basically get started. They'll give you feedback, they'll tell you what's going to work, they'll make suggestions. And if you, I th what I like about this is Shutterstock really have this program set up so that you can um, pretty much dive into this uh, cold and get started with stock photography. The URL you want to go to if you're interested in this is submit.shutterstock.com slash AOP. And I'm going to put that in the show notes below, but that is submit.shutterstock.com slash AOP. The slash AOP bit on there just lets them know that I sent you. Um, but anyway, go sign up for the free account and go download the materials. There's a couple PDF files and there's a lot of great information in there if you were interested in stock photography. Um, sometimes it's hard to get started with this and like I said I think Shutterstock probably makes it the most straightforward and easy to get going. There are obviously other companies as well but what I like about this method is they're going to help coach you on what is going to sell and what is going to be viable in terms of the work that you're producing. Um, just because you go snap some images does not mean that they're going to be popular or get purchased by a lot of clients and so because they work directly with the clients and they understand what those needs are a lot of times um, I think that's a huge help and it communicates things that you need to know as a photographer if you're interested in being successful. So anyway, I hope that helps um, for those of you who are wondering about stock photography and how to get started within that. And once again, the URL is below. Leave a question if you have, a, uh, if you have something you want me to answer on the show and I'll see if I can get to it in an upcoming episode. Just do that by leaving a comment below. Everybody, once again, this has been an episode of Photo Friday Q&A and I'll see you guys next week. Later.